You type in a prompt like underwater library and the image is assembled to order in mere minutes, almost like magic. This isn't a simple Google images search pulling up relevant results. This is something akin to artificial intelligence. I truly believe media synthesis is about to turn the art world on its head, so I made this video as a primer slash introduction to what you would need to know. I split it into three parts. First, we'll talk about what AI art actually is. Second, we'll look at a brief overview of how the tech works, and this is necessary to cover if you want to make good outputs yourself. And last, I'll share how you can make your own AI art at home, covering some options that are free and others that may provide better results if you're willing to invest additional money and or time. So first, what do I mean when I say AI art? An artist can type in any information they choose, and the renderer will make an image to spec. This can be information about content, style, color scheme, composition, and so much more. These systems show a surprising amount of sophistication. Look at this painting it generated when I asked for a painting of Elmo by Salvador Dali. It took the forms, colors, and shapes of Elmo, and then proceeded to deconstruct them in a very Dali-esque way. That deep understanding of subject and composition is what makes this art technology truly artificial intelligence. HAL 9000 this is not, but it does utilize an advanced understanding about the way the world works when building its images. This image, although terrifying, was my result for action figure Joe Biden. The system was able to take the characteristics of an action figure, namely low detail plastic sculpting and the unnatural shining texture, and applied recognizable features of Joe Biden. For this one, note the way that it managed to incorporate the color scheme of meat marbleization into the palace architecture, finding an interesting compositional balance. Any prompt you can think of, the system will do its best to render, although it's also pretty easy to stump it. There are about a zillion models with different approaches to image building, some are faster, some are slower, some will create images that are shockingly coherent, while others make pictures that are a little more fever dreamy. Generally, coherence and image size require substantially slower exports, but models are getting better and better at building their outputs more quickly. So with an idea of what AI art is, how exactly does it work? In a way, it began with language, more specifically text models like GPT-2. These models ingested absurd amounts of written English with no real human curation or labeling. From all the text it consumed, it began to infer connections between words using a special neural network architecture that's called a transformer. It learned which words typically follow other words, which families of words constitute certain tones, which tenses occur hand in hand and when, and all of this without any specific human direction. In fact, these models get so good at their job that you can input any given text to them and they'll find a plausible way to continue your writing while matching your style. Take a look at this example. Someone eventually had the bright idea to take these exact same transformer models for text and apply them to image data instead. So instead of connections between words, they started to learn connections between objects, scene composition, and so much more that goes into a picture. Soon they've got parameters that they used to understand a scene, which are all purely correlative instruments. As a fascinating example, notice that when I change this attribute named facial hair, even if I adjust it just slightly, it actually starts to change the face and make it look more and more masculine. And that's simply because that the software overall has noticed a direct correlation between the amount of facial hair present in an image and the overall masculinity of that face. These correlations, or, or really parameters for the model, are just based on the things that it's able to observe. And while under the hood of the model, it'll never actually have a name as neat as facial hair, or blue eyes, or earrings, this actually represents how these models are sort of understanding the content of the image. The types of things it's tweaking over time to settle in on the desired output. This takes us to the AI art model that we'll be discussing, VQGAN plus CLIP. As mentioned earlier, there are a zillion different models with different approaches, but they all follow a somewhat similar framework. So how is an image made? Well, it's something of a tag team effort. Let's start with a newcomer, Clip. Clip is a captioning model whose function is to figure out what a picture contains. Every time you do a CAPTCHA online, you're basically helped to train models like Clip to better recognize the contents of a picture. Um, and by now these systems are quite robust. So Clip is locked in a box with VQGAN, our resident artist, and VQGAN starts with a field of random pixels, and your prompt is placed in front of Clip. 
VQGAN does some intelligent scrambling of the pixels in the field, and then asks Clip, how much does this look like Barack Obama bear? Clip likely decides, not very much, so VQGAN permutes it again in an intelligent way. Does it look like Barack Obama bear now? Still no. Uh, eventually though, there will come a time when VQGAN's random experimenting, informed by those image transformers we talked about earlier, will begin to resemble something that Clip is looking for. Clip says the equivalent of warmer, and so the dance between the two finally begins in earnest. VQGAN adjusts the image field, Clip assesses, scores it against Barack Obama bear, and on and on they go until they collaboratively find an output that matches your prompt. So why does this architecture matter to the artist? Remember, the image is only coming together based on Clip's captioning, so prompts should be written accordingly. These models perform best when given an input prompt almost in the style of an image caption, like what you would see on Wikipedia under a picture, so something that literally describes the content of the image is usually ideal. If you feed it something abstract like death or somber remembrance, you might get interesting results sometimes, but they'll often lack coherence because Clip has never really seen an image that it would caption as simply somber remembrance. Furthermore, a successful caption will explain the relationship between the items in a scene rather than just listing nouns. You gotta help our caption buddy out. If you find this tech interesting, I've actually written a cyberpunk sci-fi fantasy novel with art synthesis as the B-plot. I'll put some links in the description and we'll talk about it some more at the very end of this video. So if you're interested, please do check that out. So now that we know what AI art is and how it works, it's time to discuss how you can make your own. First, important thing to know, these types of renderings are computationally expensive, so it's generally going to cost you monetarily or in good hardware. For free options, there are web services is out there that can do a pretty good job, wombo.art Create some nice visually striking images in these vertical panel arrangements. Pros include the fact that it's very quick to generate, and I wasn't able to find any real limitations to how many times you use it in my casual, you know, experimentations with the website. That being said, it has relatively poor prompt adherence. They always make these interesting abstract paintings, but they don't exactly show what you mean to show. The next one that I used was called Night Cafe, and this one actually is a really nice piece of software that utilizes both VQ, GAN, and CLIP as we discussed, and a more coherent model called CLIP Guided Diffusion. Overall, the results are very nice from this service. That being said, they limit the amount of renders that you make behind a credit system. And I understand why they have to do that because of how expensive computationally all these renders are, but it does mean that free users might very quickly hit a wall when trying to play around with Night Cafe. The third service that I'm a fan of is Art Breeder. I already showed this one off earlier when I was talking about the attributes that go into an image. It's a little bit less open-ended in that you can't do text input, but playing around with these image attributes is just a hell of a lot of fun. It also has nice animation support for making very compelling videos, so strong recommendation. More interesting than these, though, in my opinion at least, is Visions of Chaos, which I've been using throughout this video for most of my exports. This piece of software will allow users to render their own AR art on their machines, and it also allows you to get into the nitty gritty of tuning model parameters. There isn't enough time to go into detail on what all of the parameters mean, but internet searches can generally set you in the right direction. An important note, you need an NVIDIA GPU to make the software work, and it ideally should be an advanced one with a lot of VRAM. Set up can take an hour-ish, and it's a bit of a headache, but the freedom it gives you is well worth the effort. Details can be found on the software's website, and the author also keeps a blog where he details a lot of the current text-to-image models out there and their relative strengths and weaknesses. It's certainly worth a read for anyone who is interested in this technology. Now, for people without access to an NVIDIA GPU, worry not, there is still hope. You can also engage at the cutting edge of this tech with published Google Colab notebooks from the artists that are programming these models. In effect, you're renting a Google server to run the complicated calculations, and the subscription prices are actually pretty cheap for an entire month of use. It does require a bit of comfort with coding to figure out how to work these models. Discovering where to put in prompts, for example, isn't always the easiest, but you really can't get closer to the cutting edge than these. You're actually opening up the models, engaging with their code directly, and then you get to see the outputs that they generate when they're running on Google's really advanced video cards. 
The Visions of Chaos blog already mentioned earlier actually collects these Google Colab links, and you can similarly find other Colab links by scraping the web or Twitter wherever AI art happens to be shared. For running the VRAM greedy models, Colab has actually been a lifesaver to me, so it does really work well as a primary means of generating art, or at least as a supplemental means you can fall back on if your own system hits a computational bottleneck. We're getting close to an artistic singularity. Already, machine-generated outputs pass the Turing test. Check out this Reddit thread where I saw an AI-generated image had commenters fooled. So where does this tech go next? Imagine a world where GPT-2 gets good enough to write entire novels on its own. Imagine a world where you can type out that movie idea you've always had, and an entire feature-length film is rendered in minutes. Imagine a world where a machine can prompt itself, and then proceed to generate masterworks of paintings, of music, of literature. Not only are we rapidly approaching that world, but that's the backdrop of my new novel, Starfall. I don't want to give off the wrong impression, media synthesis is only the B-plot, but fans of this AI tech should find plenty to enjoy in the novel. I hope you enjoy the trailer. I do as I was made to. A tool, and nothing more. A hammer has no conception if the nail it drives enters a support beam for a home, or the wrist of a heretic strung to a cross. Morals are human constructs, while tools are merely accelerations of the processes of physics. Heat, electricity, and entropy of raw tonight's events, not a genuine human mind with agency, if such a concept is a thing you choose to believe in. And what is done is already done. The question now is an entirely different one. Once I explain where the night will soon evolve, what next would you do? Truth, Mr. Graves, is entirely a construction of consensus. The light has rejected you, hammered creature, as you are unworthy. It was never meant for the likes of you, never be held by the likes of you. It is a power for the gods alone. I hereby return to your mortality. You got a light in you, brighter than just about anyone else I've ever met. But we're playing a game with stakes that are far too high. The odds are good we don't both make it out of this. Life. 